Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you inside Mimic Horn Arena for tonight's battle between the Orangeville Northmen and their 4 and 4 record with one overtime loss thrown in there. And Mimico's perfect 8 and 0 record has them atop the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League standings. I'm Matthew Carrickin for the JBI Sports Network, and this is your first game of the week here, presented by the JBI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Mimico coming off a Absolute dismantling of the Six Nations Arrows, 21 to four. And then the Arrows turned around the very next night and knocked off Orangeville by a score of 8-7. So this will be an interesting one here as Finley Thompson and Mimico take over early on. White jerseys with the blue lettering for Mimico going left to right, away from Owen Dew. Cross crease pass off the crossbar from Bryce accordingly to start it off. In behind Chris Origlieri, who burst onto the scene last year in the bubble tournament season that was held at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. Earned him a spot on the San Diego Seals where he got his first win of his National Lacrosse League career, but only one and three to start this season and starting the game with a goal. Here is Orangeville. Cross crease cut in Orangeville with the one nothing lead here. Opening minute of this first period. Northman back to the dot again as Reed Kurtz from Mimico tried to push it forward. There against Jaden Shapara. Shapara, I believe, with KW last season. There's a shot from Aurelieri. Out to Donnie Scott running across center. Noah Liam Matthews continues to add to his team high totals here. 11 goals, 19 assists, 30 points. See assists on the goal by Noah Millsap to open the scoring, as does. Jeremy Searle, Orangeville, still deep in Mimic Hill territory, had the reset of the shot clock. And now taken down is the AP number 23, Ethan Brown. Late in the eight count. And to get back here to Orangeville. Northman crashing in, laid off the bench. Aiden Long shot scores. Aiden Long through traffic. You see him, the last one off the bench to get into this attack. And there is no chance that Owen Dew saw that one. Cole Teeple, the hero against Whitby on Friday night. A last second goal, literally at the buzzer to beat the Whitby Warriors. Shot hit off of Origlieri, so no over and back as Mimico chases it down. They're calling for a reset of the shot clock and they finally get it. All the way outside is Peshko. Jonathan Peshko in. Lost it in the feet of Origlieri and it squirts through. Play looked like it was over. Everyone was scampering to the bench.
See what happens here. Orangeville saying the whistle went, but. I don't know, as Peshko's goal rattles around and. The whistle was on the lips of the official as he shot back the other way. Goes in for Orangeville. So the quick response. McGrath up the floor, out to the outside. And I think that's Millsap who finds Leo Matthews cutting to the net. Pair of points for Millsap here in the early stages. Two and a half minutes gone and already 3-1 for Orangeville. Only 72 goals allowed for Mimico so far through their eight games. Already three here in the opening two and a half minutes. Those two spread, of course, between Lane Hershka and Owen Du, who is in the net tonight. The most he's ever allowed in this season was 12 against the Beaches. Justin Lee threw the brakes on, but slid towards and into the crease. So the ball will be played back here for Orangeville. Bonnie Scott. Back up top for Matthews. Leah Matthews. Working around the screen from Teeple. Now they go all the way outside as Long cuts back. Aiden Long. Long pass up top for Teeple. Bounces past Dew and down towards center at the floor. Here comes Peshko, his shot. In behind a Wrigley area again, who threw the left hand at it. And covered the loose ball in the crease. Another close one as Jeremy Searle was there to help out. Teeple off the bench. Here for Matthews. Fakes the shot, can't get it around Trey Deer either, who's setting the screen in front. Under 10 on the go in the shot clock as Millsap is taken down. Two Mountaineer defenders went after the ball and it was quickly moved down towards the crease and Trey Deer's shot will not get through before the 30-second count. Ryan Dukas, Brent Cologne, Mike Melvin, the three officials here tonight. As Finley Thompson tried to get it through to Isaiah Moran Weeks, credited with the Mimico goal. Moran Weeks back up top. Now outside for Curtis Buxa. Backing away is Dudamain, and Lucas Dudamain gets up. There's a defender who's lost a stick here for Orangeville. Finley Thompson around the back, in front for Dudamain. What a look that was, as now Orangeville tries to break out. Liam McGrath does get past Thompson, and will wire a shot in on Dew. Who makes the save? Liam Ferris fell over there, and Ferris still tied up with Millsap. <laughs> And yeah, that's a penalty all day long as the stick was in the hand of Ferris and he just chucked it towards the outside boards. And Liam Ferris is gonna go for an unsportsmanlike penalty here. And one of the more obvious calls, if I do say so myself, that'll be made in the barn here tonight. 3-1 early for Orangeville. A chance now to get one more. Ninth in the league in power play goals, however, with just 13, make it 14. Crease the violation, no. And a tie up up top as Justin Sykes couldn't break away. Mimico do get it over center though. In the stick of Brown and through the crease here is Lee. Big collision with Moran Weeks, who does come away with the loose ball, and Mimico waiting for help. 
They're also first in shorthanded goals. Our Mimico with 21 on this season. As Lee's jump shot couldn't get through Riglieri. Isaiah Moran Weeks again picking it up in the corner. Moran Weeks back for Reed Kurtz, who will slow it down after giving to Jonathan Peshko. Five of those shorthanded goals belong to Justin Sykes, the overall leader in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. Not out there on this set as Peshko still has it late in the shot clock. Does get one away to hit Origlieri in. Looks like Justin Lee is going to chase down the loose ball and will leave here for Reed Kurtz. Another late shot clock reset as Peshko gets pushed to the outside by McGrath. Liam McGrath back on Peshko, lowers his shoulder. Turn, slammed on the brakes, however, as Donnie Sl Scott slid over. Back up top, the shot from Kurtz. Bounces away wide and will head up into the screening. And penalty time down to 15 seconds. So Orangeville got 20 on their first possession and the rest of it was all Mimico into the attacking territory. Cam Sanderson into the corner, back up top. Quarterbacking is Matthews. We are five on five as the penalties expired. Ferris back out there. Loose ball. Here for Orangeville, the shot comes through from Millsap and it'll be chased down. Once again, as Matthews was headed off the floor, has to turn back. Millsap lost his footing close to center, still having trouble with it, and it will be an over and back as Sykes stays up in transition. Justin Sykes, older brother Matthew Sykes, also a San Diego SEAL teammate of Riglieri, named an assistant general manager and player development coach here with Mimico. Joining now Riley Hutchcraft on the bench as two Mimico alumnus. Trey Deer out for Orangeville and of course Northman alumni on both of these benches all over the place and found throughout the lacrosse world. Mimico will jog up and slow down over center Ferris. Flipping for Finley Thompson before he heads off. Minute 40 away from the halfway mark of the period. Still 3-1 for Orangeville. As Thompson shakes off his man. Shot went off the end boards. Dudamain back for Thompson. And Origlieri caught that in the left arm. Penalty coming here, I think, to Orangeville. Ryan Duke has had too many men called on the change. Someone leave early, I think. Unfortunately, off camera, so we can't verify the call. So after Mimico killed off a penalty of their own, they will be up a band here for two minutes. Trying to get a goal back. Justin Sykes Orange. turns and shoots. That one went high up into the rafters here. Came straight back down. Curtis Buckta will take it in the corner. Peshko for Thompson now. Back for Sykes. Only one left to touch it is Moran Weeks here in the corner. Shot in off the shoulder of Wrigley. jump ball. Looked like it was batted back to a Wrigley of course. Our broadcast position tonight much closer here in the corner than we normally are. Justin Lee struggled there to regain possession for Mimico, but now Finley Thompson will settle it down. Thompson and Sykes playing catch. Across the crease, looking for Peshko, intercepted, and off to the races is Elijah Edwards. Edwards, low shot scores!
Pass towards the crease, intercepted by Elijah Edwards, who takes off and heads down floor. Oh, I think that sneaks between the post and the leg. And Orangeville are up 4-1 now. And is this a water break or are we getting a goalie change? Lane Hrushka is coming in. Four goals in nine minutes and 34 seconds. So Lane Hrushka taking over also with a 4-0 record. Only 28 goals against. He had the back-to-back -back against KW, 10 and 7 against them. Brampton and Six Nations, including game on the weekend. 21 to 4. Hrushka was in net for that, and he'll get tested early as they come flying in. And contact made with Hrushka. Perhaps from his own man. As Mimico still on the power play for 21 seconds. And Sykes wearing 22. Couldn't poke it behind O'Riglieri. Isaiah Moran Weeks back out there. High pass for Peshka. Thompson looks off Sykes for Moran Weeks to quick stick goal. Four seconds showing on the power play, so. This should go as a power play goal. Finley Thompson looks off of Sykes and goes to Moran Weeks on the crease. First point of the night for Finley Thompson. Who is seventh in the league in the league with 39 points coming in? That's 40. Peshko with an assist as well. So Moran Weeks, Peshko, and Thompson connecting on all three goals. Or sorry, both goals so far for Mimico. To the four that Orangeville has put in. And out of those four, they've got eight different players with points. Late shot does hit off. First gun rebound back to the crease they go. And Aiden Long gets up slowly after that shot. Hrushka well out of his net. So a pair of Western National Lacrosse League goaltenders in now. Riglieri representing the San Diego Seals. And Lane Hrushka, practice goaltender. Practice roster goalie, if I'm not mistaken, for the Saskatchewan Rush. Going head to head here tonight. Big battle for this loose ball over on the far side as it's going to roll up the boards and running after it was Brody Cascanet couldn't pick up cleanly and now Cascanet blows a tire. And that allows Cole Teeple to bring into the attacking zone. Cutting to the net, the dunk shot attempt from Noah Millsap turned aside by Hrushka. Kaskinet sends it down to the boards, and Ethan Brown thought we were getting an eight second violation, but there's a trip over by the bench. And Aiden Long is heading off. So Mimico did score on their power play. Second most power play goals in the league with 36 coming in. But they also gave up a shorthanded goal. Here's Moran Weeks to Peshko in front and played back for Curtis Buckta who ran through the crease. 
Finley Thompson is making a case for the delay of game call against Liam McGrath, who will now get double teamed, taking it down the boards. Thompson still goes after him, wasn't aware that he had dropped the ball. And Aaron Chaguri wasn't aware that he had done the same. As now Mimico does gain the zone. 40 seconds gone, however, in their man advantage and seven remaining in the period. Thompson for Sykes. The return pass went high off the glass. Thompson does recover it back for Sykes. Low shot, Finley Thompson, a Rigliari the save. Mimico the rebound and second chance never got through. It was Elijah Edwards there to turn it away. Bukta sends Colm Barnett into the boards in front of the Mimico bench. Ball rolls into the corner as Barnett goes to the net. And Nate Ruff takes it away from Hart. Ruff passing for Trey Deer. And now Cam Sanderson. Laid off the bench. This time Cole Teeple shot high and well wide. Sent the official in the corner ducking for cover as the shot clock does sound against the Northman. 25 seconds left in the power play as Mimico will bring it across center. Thompson spins away from pressure. Carson Moyer, first time calling his name today despite the 17 goals already on the season. Thompson from Sykes. Moran Weeks, the no look pass and Patrick watch in effect for Moran Weeks here in the first period. Not to be on that play. Out of the box, a shot in. Cam Sanderson goes flying into the corner just as we go back to five on five with five and a half to go. In what is a 4-2 Northman lead. Long off the bench, he got hit as the shot was coming. Sanderson couldn't bring it down cleanly, so shot clock continues to tick down here and Bryce accordingly behind everybody. Brody Cascanet got into the back of Long who went down and that was enough for the moving screen. Here's Long on the run, that shot off of Hrushka. And the rebound secured by Cole Teeple. Him and Trey Deer. Not sure if it was an intentional hidden ball trick or not, but looked like it as Long gets it back. Cross here for Teeple, couldn't bring it down. And Justin Lee will turn on the afterburners, drops the shoulder, takes the shot, and a big collision in the crease of a Wrigley-Ari. Well, it looks like everybody is getting up and headed away from danger with no further incident. Four and a half to go, Trey Deer will slow it down. Liam Matthews looking to set a screen. Matthews will set a second one, and Trey Deer works over top. The shot in on Hrushka. Second chance goes wide. Still skipping off the boards where it's picked up by Mimico, and down behind everybody was Hudson Thompson, who skids to a stop, and that would have been interesting had he brought it down because the chin strap is loose on his helmet. Colm Barnett. We'll slow it down with Liam Matthews. The trade here. Now for Millsap. The pick and the roll back across the crease to Deer. Who touched the paint. Handing the ball back to Mimica. Ferris jogging it over center and the arm is high again. Hrushka on the bench. I think there was a slash on the way off the floor. So six attackers on here for the home side. With three and a half to go in the period. Thompson to Moyer, a Wrigley whistle when as it was bouncing around in the crease and we get the slashing call. Mimico arguing this play in the crease. As it's Trey Deer on the slash. Mimico were this close is Ryan Dukas right there to say no, he had definitely blown that dead. Third power play already in the period. For the Mountaineers, 
103 penalty minutes, the lowest in the OJLL. For Orangeville and Milico takes advantage. One too many opportunities for one of the top ranked power plays in the league. Starts with Thompson up top. He goes around the back and the low shot from Peshko. Will put it behind Origlieri. Nimico just never seems to be out of a game as Moyer now on the break runs through the crease as that shot went in on Origlieri. But this thing was 4 1 and Mimico back within one right now before the end of the period. Under three to play. Pair of power play markers. Orangeville got one shorthanded as well. Trey Deer has to spin and fire as the shot clock was about to sound. Accordingly, bringing it. Across the line, Alex Roussel through Carson Moyer, Lucas Dudamain goes around a screen. Trey Deer stuck out there on defense now. As Moyer took that away from Liam Stadnick, there was no one between him and the Mimico net. That shot looked like it got behind a Wrigley off the crease as Thompson recovers at center. Roussel. Moyer was cutting, and that ball never made it across as a Wrigley will now give up to Colm Barnett. Under two to play. Both teams will have two timeouts to use at any point during the game. Only one per period, however. As we are set to play three 20-minute periods. Big hit on the far side as Sykes sent his man flying in. Right off the bench and right at Sykes is Noah Millsap, who's still having a conversation with Sykes in front. And again, Cam Sanderson is knocked down in front of the crease as now Trey Deer comes over to say something in the corner. I think we're going to see the hit, but a roughing call to Trey Deer. As Cam Sanderson was sent flying twice on the same shift, and Mimico is going to be an extra man down, an extra man up here. As the bench picked up an unsportsmanlike penalty. And the emphatic call from Brent Colomb as well. Braden Stokes over to serve as we are about to hit the last minute Order of play. And Golden chance now from Mimico. Ball goes up and out of play after it hit Riglieri, so Buckta will bring it back down. Buckta and Petsko. Now for Thompson. Finley Thompson for Sykes, who cuts over to the top spot and he shot off for Riglieri and out of play. Buckta with it again. Peshko. Sykes, Finley Thompson, and Sykes. Cross crease pass intercepted. Here goes Jaden Chiapara. Being chased there by Thompson and Sykes and elects to slow things down. Thompson all over him. Chiapara breaks free the shot. And, oh, must have been a reset call there. As the delayed penalty from Cologne had his arm high and signaled a reset. I thought that trickled through again. We're, Bit far from that trail net, but Finley Thompson will go off for a hold as Chiapara broke out. 
So, under 20 to play here in the period. The popular three on four penalty kill. As Orangeville sets up, Cole Teeple to the outside. Where Noel Millsap is. Millsap got things started with his goal and that will end our first period 4-3 in favor of Orangeville who jumped out to an early lead. This is the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week. Presented by the JVI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. We'll take a 10 minute timeout and bring you back inside Mimico Arena.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse the League broadcasts are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org. And our thanks to them for their support for the second season running. Our next broadcast is Saturday afternoon. Note the start time. It is a 3 p.m. Eastern start on Saturday afternoon. It is the McDougal Cup between the Oakville Buzz and the Burlington Chiefs from the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. There's a charity alumni game following that, which I believe will be streaming as well. JVI will. Be sure to tune into the social media channels for more information on Saturday's game. It's already in the playlist. If you're looking to bookmark the link, like and share this video, as well as subscribe and turn notifications on where you'll get an alert every time we go live across Ontario and through to the Minto Cup. And speaking of, be sure to join us in the second intermission where Commissioner Mark Grimes will join me. And if you missed the announcement today, we will have details on this year's version of the Minto Cup. Mimico starts with possession here on the four on three power play in a Wrigley area to the left to swing the stick out and make a spectacular save to keep it 4-3 at least for the time being. 20 seconds remaining in the double penalties to Orangeville. There will be a mass exodus which will turn into a abbreviated power play for Orangeville. Long sets the screen here for Matthews. Slams on the brakes. Liam Matthews for Trey Deer. It is still Lane Rushka in the net for the Mountaineers. Took over for Owen Dew, allowing four goals in nine minutes and 34 seconds after getting the start. I'm not sure if it's something Mimico does or not, but neither goaltender until about 20 minutes before the game knew who was starting. In fact, our crew knew before the goaltenders did. Under 10 to go. Mimico have been basically going, if not back and forth, sharing the load 1A, 1B this season as both Du and Hrushka have both played four games now. As well as a half period appearance from Nate Whittem. The third string AP netminder. Cam Sanderson for Trey Deer here as Orangeville set up a power play. Long range shot low. Handled there by Hershka. Again, just 13 power play goals on the season for the Northmen. As Reed Kurtz brings it down. Kurtz for Thompson. And Finley Thompson off the bench. Finds Peshko. Ball bouncing towards that Orangeville crease where Sykes will chase it in the corner and pick up. Sykes feeding it through for Hudson Thompson. Got away from him and up to center where, excuse me, Owen Ron was absolutely swarmed by Mimico players. We are back to five on five as the Northman bring it back into Mimico territory. Hrushka sailed it high and up into the, I was gonna say rafters, but more of a cloth <laughs> on the ceiling here at Mimico. Again, formerly an outdoor bowl for those of you not familiar with the Story we shared last time we were here. Long to the far side. Ferris goes high to set the pick for Long. Wheeling around the crease and taking the shot. Excuse me, I believe that was Cam Sanderson forcing Rushke into a low save. Three and a half gone in the period. Ball to the corner for Alex Roussel. Roussel to the outside from Moyer. 
And a big hit there on Kurtz just as the ball was arriving. As Kurtz was trying to set up for a shot. Liam McGrath with Carson Moyer in his face. Moyer causing the eight second count. Bryce accordingly flipping across for Curtis Buckta. Get the inside information down here, Kennedy. <laughs> Trey Deer without a stick right now as they run to the dressing room to get a one. It's our vantage point this close to the bench. As this loose ball is going to go all the way down into the corner, Buckta in to collide with Aiden Long and brought out by Brody Kaskinet, who will rainbow it over top of everybody and into the basket of Buckta. Buckta for Peshko. Peshko slams on the brakes. Peshko turning back and firing. That was Finley Thompson, excuse me, who got knocked down after the play. And now on the run, Peshko puts it in. And we got a tie game five minutes into this period. Got no worries, buddy. Scramble for the loose ball, Peshko and Moran Weeks. Moran Weeks will get it out to the Mimico goal scoring leader. And Peshko has four points here in the game. Three now for Moran Weeks as we're tied at four. And Trey Deer's got a stick back, happy to report. Going to add sideline reporter to Kennedy Diet's stat line here tonight. Directing here in Mimico. Here's Deer, fresh twig and all off the bench. Trying to go over the shoulder there for Matthews, but cleanly intercepted by Jonathan Peshko. Peshko feeding ahead for Sykes, who scores. A typical Justin Sykes goal. Picked off in transition. And Minico with their first lead of the game. Peshko the steal. And Sykes with the finish. Off the faceoff, here's Cam Sanderson. Pardon me, that was Colm Barnett. Carson Moyer, the second assist as Aiden Long will pass back for Sanderson off the end boards and covering up is Hershka. Aaron Taguri going for a run. Off the bench, Justin Lee's shot. Sails wide, picked up by Moyer in the corner. Now Liam Ferris back across, diving towards the crease and contact made with Arigliari. That'll be a crease violation as Orangeville headed up the floor. Faking low and going high, Liam Matthews. On the quick transition play the other way. Here's the Roussel sh chance that starts this. Almost too quick for a camera crew who are the best in the business. Tied again at five. As early movement there from, is that Cole Tepel at the faceoff dot? Here's Deer in the corner. Trey Deer, cross for Tepel. Low shot from Deer and Hershka came out to meet it. Ethan Brown will pick up. Brown across center. Here 
They're calling it Searle from Stokes as Isaiah Moran Weeks cuts through the Orangeville crease. And then at the side of the net, Orangeville player taken down and Mimico will go to the penalty box. And it's right in front of the official. It'll be a cross check against Justin Sykes. Keep your eye on the far side of the crease here as ball bounces in front of, I believe that's eight and long and Sykes right into the back. So third power play of the game for Orangeville, 0-3 right now as they swing it across for Matthews. He'll go over the top around three sets of picks for Hrushka. Covers up the rebound with Trey Deer on the doorstep. Four seconds gone as Tuguri gets it. Will long bomb heave it down into the corner and that skips past accordingly and up into the screening. Liam Matthews. Matthews up top, Trey Deer takes the shooter spot. Back for Matthews, wants the shot and drilled that right off the back of Cole Teeple. Rebound sails all the way down the floor where Riglieri is out of the crease to get it. Riglieri is listed as having a goal on the season. So that long bomb shot, probably not gonna do it with a netminder in the cage, but one to look out for. Really back in between the pipes now and watching his team break out. Matthews quick stick and Hrushka off to his left to meet it. Kurtz running up the near side. to main around the far side as Thompson has the ball near side. Peshko will now pop out. Late in the shot clock over the shoulder comes a shot. There from Lucas due to main. And now Orangeville will pick up. Crease violation called there on Elijah Edwards by Brent Colomb. Once again, joined by Mike Melvin and Ryan Dukas tonight. Ferris to the outside. Carson Moyer tries the spin move, finds room to get to the crease. That shot and handled by Origlieri. Chris Origlieri down floor. And Trey Deer left early, says Brett Colomb. So another power play coming up here for Mimico as we near the halfway mark of the period. Tied five apiece fifth man advantage of the game for the Mountaineers. One of those was a five on three. They've got two goals and have given up one shorthanded. <laughs> 38 power play goals now on the season for the Mountaineers. Peshko for Thompson. Around the back, back for Peshko. To the mesh. Not much of a play here with Finley Thompson, but. Just a straight snipe. And all righties on that power play. The third power play goal of the game. Moran Weeks, Peshko, and Finley Thompson all have one now. Mimico coming back as Aiden McDonnell controls the faceoff. Will pass off to the captain, Justin Sykes. Around the screen of Moran Weeks, Finley Thompson will put it back into the corner. 
No shot here for Peshko. Johnson Peshko eventually does get it through in Origlieri there to make the save. Penalty coming again to Mimico. Origlieri on his horse trying to get to the bench. Nearly got there before the official. Two of them have their arms high. And as Matthews tries to escape trouble. Late in the shot clock. Matthews still has it. Long range shot and off the end boards. This will bounce out of harm's way and we will get the tripping call here against Mimico. As Rushka calls for a water break. Man, I wish we had a camera on Chris Origlieri who was flying on the way to the bench. So as Mimico goes to the penalty box, this will be the fourth power play now. Still waiting for the first power play goal for the Orangeville Northmen. As you get a look at Lane Hershka. From Saskatchewan, I believe it was a couple years ago, wasn't it the Founders Cup where really burst on the scene, played a season of arena lacrosse and drafted by the Saskatchewan Rush and now here playing junior A for Mibico. Sanderson up top. He's got Jeremy Searle, quarterback in the power to play here for Matthews. Searle comes down to set the screen into the corner. Found the cutter, but it bounced off the stick. Searle out of the corner with it for Sanderson. Back for Matthews, who will take top spot. Round the back into the feet of Searle. Picked up by Cohen Jennings. And thrown up and out of play. And off a mimical player. We'll give a fresh 30 here to Orangeville. Trey Deer now taking top spot. Officials have the 10, or excuse me, the shot clock count down on the floor is Deer shot. Handled by Hrushka. Reed Kurtz. Jogging down the far side, goes one-on-one -on -one with Deer. Now passing from Moyer. Deer up to meet Moyer now. Donnie Scott over to double team. They knock down Moyer and the ball pops free and it will be. Trey Deer that comes away with it. Deer for Scott. Mimico Bench wanted an eight second call. Not gonna get it, it was very close however as Liam Matthews plays the hidden ball trick here. Up top for the power play. Under eight to go in the period, nearing 30 seconds left here in the penalty. And a moving screen will be called up top. And bit extra for Cam Sanderson afterwards who took the shot and Mimico thought was after the whistle. Long bomb down the floor. Aaron Taguri was running out of time on the eight count, so just tried to ice it. And Cole Teeple quickly back into position. Long and Deer for Matthews. Teeple. Deer looks off long now. Penalty has expired. Sykes coming back onto the floor. Shot hit Ferris in front. Sykes was hanging out back at center. And the outlet pass never materialized. 6-5 for Mimico here with just over seven minutes to play in the second period. The Ontario Junior Lacrosse League game of the week. And I'm Matthew Carrick in with the JVI Sports Network as Peshko. Running shot and bounces off of Riglieri. And the race is on now between Hrushka and Elijah Edwards. And Hrushka put the hit on Edwards. Long pass there. Not sure if that was Peshko or Thompson who found Moran Weeks on the crease. As here comes Colm Barnett. Barnett's pass 
Bounces wide and off to the races. The other way is Isaiah Moran Weeks. Still with just the two goals on the game and Origlieri will hold his ground. Player for Orangeville went hard and in the end boards Jamie Hunt getting up slowly. Back the other way, Sanderson. Into the feet of Trey Deer. As it bypassed Graydon Stokes. Deer being worked over by Aiden McDonnell as they get in each other's face and the sticks come up. No penalties come as a result. But keep your eye on the bottom right of your screen though. McDonnell and Deer continue to work each other over. Ball coming to Deer now. Deer over the top. Passing the corner, nobody home. Off the glass here for Long. Pick in front of Long, will ripple the mesh. Aiden Long's second of the game. Will tie the game at six. It was his first one that opened the scoring. He was looking cross floor pass the entire way. Was Aiden Long. And that froze Hrushka and Long put it in past the post. Sanderson with three assists in the game as Trey Deer picks up the initial apple. Outside. Here for Millsap. His one-handed shot finds Rushka. In behind everybody, Liam Ferris. To the crease, Origlieri down, and the ball stayed somehow in the crease in front of the net. There is Origlieri went down. Jeremy Searle. Aiden Long. Moving screen in front as Searle went straight through Finley Thompson and gets up slowly. This is the AP Brett Harrison walking down the boards. Felt like he ate a high stick as well on the way, but eventually Harrison had the ball knocked free. Still trying to figure out who's got it. Must have been Orangeville. They were late in their eight count as Mimico picks up. The shot clock resets. Here for Bukta. Four minutes to go here or close to it in the second period. Bukta for Moyer. Here goes Hrushka on the delayed penalty call. Peshko, no shot there. Under 10 on the clock as Bukta will find one, but ripped it off the player in front. I believe that was McGrath. Eventually the shot clock does expire and we'll get the sixth Mimico power play of the game. Sixes on the board as well as McGrath jogs off a slashing call. Coming here to remind her that our next Junior A game of the week is a game of the McDougal Cup competed between the Orangeville Excuse me, the Oakville Buzz and the Burlington Chiefs. It's a Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time game. Be sure you're subscribed as Anika Wrigley makes the splits. And the shot clock resets, so that was a save as well. Goodness. Finley Thompson and Peshko, the hidden ball trick. Thompson had it the whole way. Now gives to Peshko, who's low shot. Bounces off of Wrigley and into the corner. Thompson back with it, scores! <laughs> Finley Thompson's second power play goal of the game. Stretches the lead here for Mimico. That's the first shot attempt, rolling into the corner for Bukta. Back up top for Thompson, and he will put it in. Bucks' second assist. 7-6. Six, six. 
For the Mountaineers with under three to play. Both teams have both timeouts remaining here as we get down the stretch in the second period. Tier takes this pass in the corner. Off the face mask is the shot of Hrushka. Tier runs away from Kaskinet. They check on Hrushka. He says he's good to go. So the attack closes in once again. Sanderson up and out of play. As they'll restart with a fresh 30 over in the corner. Here's Deer. That bounced off Ferris and into the stick of Hrushka. Kaskinet has help. Likes to draw back himself. Now goes to the trailer. Who's immediately swarmed by three defenders. Moyer. Swim move trying to get past Barnett. Due to Maine. To the outside. Shot from Moyer from long range. Bounces off the end boards. Gets back for Moyer in a stick battle with Donnie Scott. Scott will hold Moyer at the side boards. Falling there was Aaron Taguri. Man, Aaron plays so much like his brother Josh, who was called the pit bull when he was here with the Mountaineers. As Teeple sidesteps his way off center spot. Teeple for Millsap to Long, bounces it in front of Hrushka and up into the screening. <laughs> 90 seconds to go in our second period again. I'll be joined by the commissioner of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, Mark Grimes, an announcement coming down today about the Minto Cup in 2022. We'll have a conversation about that as Mimico chases this ball to the outside. It'll be won by Orangeville, however. Picked up by Kurtz. Now for Thompson. And this is the last minute of play now. Lucas Dudemain out in front. Moran Weeks on the run. And Arigliari the save. All alone. Here comes Orangeville. Low shot into the feet there of Hrushka. Who made the save on Nate Ruff? Ruff back to play for the loose ball along with Jaden Chiapara. And Mimico awarded possession as Kurtz was taken down into the outside boards. Peshko will pick up as Mimico does call timeout. 34.2 left to go in the period. So they will have Hrushka on the bench for the timeout. A reminder to subscribe to this channel. All the Junior A games will be on this the <laughs> OJLL channel. Disrespectful from Riglieri. Lane Hrushka waited the entire time for the goalie union fist bump and Riglieri was having none of it. Wants to make sure he's well away from the situation. Already on his way back to the net as Hrushka gets the splash of water. Like the video and share it as well. You'll get more videos like it in your feed. As well as follow the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League at the OJLL on social media. And at JVI Video is the Twitter handle of the JVI Sports Network. More information as we continue the season and take you all the way to the Minto Cup. Again, starting with Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m., our next broadcast from the Toronto Rock Athletic Centre. Where Oakville Minor Lacrosse is holding a charity event in the evening, a celebrity game as well. So if you're in the area and want to help out Oakville Minor Lacrosse, stop by the track for a good day of lacrosse. Hrushka does remain in the net for this last possession here for Mimico. As Moyer starts it, a lot of movement right in front of the cage of Origlieri, however. Cross for Peshko. In the corner, Thompson. Finley Thompson for Peshko with three on the shot clock. And jumping in front of that and shaking out the arm was... Thought Nathan Scholes, that went up out of play. Thought for sure that was off of Orangeville who were given the ball in a last 
shot attempt. Liam McGrath was shaking out his arm, but it was given back to Orangeville, who couldn't capitalize on their last second shot. Mimico leads 7 6. We've got a great third period coming up, but before we do, shortly I'll be joined by the commissioner, Mark Grimes, here from Mimico. You're watching. The Ontario Junior Lacrosse League Game of the Week presented by the JVI Sports Network and powered by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario. Commissioner of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, Mark Grimes. A big announcement today that the Minto Cup is returning to the CAA Centre in Brampton. Yeah, we're pretty excited. Uh, long term, uh, uh, long time getting that deal done with the CAA, but it's finally done and we're pretty excited to be hosting uh, the league hosting this year. It's been 2019 since the last time uh, we had the Minto and uh, it'll be a pleasure to uh, defend at home. Uh, I think uh, last time 19 out west, so we'll, be, uh, we'll be defending at home uh, in 19. I think the last time uh, it was played at the CA Center. Uh, it was 2009, and Orangeville was a the winner there. So we're pretty excited to make that announcement today. Why, why the CAA Center as opposed to like the host or a host team? Well, just with the trying times with the COVID right now, we just thought, you know, uh, the league's done well. We've been out there pounding the pavement for some new sponsors. We saw Scotia Banks come on, and we got some others coming down the hopper. But we just thought, listen. We're back. Lacrosse is back. We got a we got a great product. We're showing with you guys JVI two games a week. Our Sunday sh our showcases and our, our weekly games. So you know it's a big arena. We want to fill that up. I think it passes around four thousand and change. Uh, and we think it'll be just a great venue. And the city of Brampton's come on uh, talking to Mayor Patrick Brown. He's excited about it. And uh, just uh, it's I really think it's a great venue. And uh, we're excited to get that committee together and start selling tickets. So for those who are interested in, in purchasing tickets, maybe coming into Brampton from out of town. What can they expect? Because I know it's a, as you said, great facility. I used to watch lacrosse there growing up. Video board, the, the whole nine. Uh, what can fans expect when they come to the CAA Center? Well, we hope to have lots of things happening, but we want to make it a family affair, affordable. Uh, again, we want to make sure that place is packed. We're going to put a good show on and uh, hopefully set the bar very high for our friends out west. So uh, we're excited. But, you know, there's some good things happening out west, too. Uh, the three leagues, the Rocky Mountain League. Uh, the teams out in BC were all kind of working together. You saw the rule change that we put in now. So, you know, I think it's very important to move this game forward. We all start working together, and that's really starting to happen. So I'm pretty encouraged by that. We're about halfway through the season now. Just uh, get your thoughts here on your second year. First kind of full season for you after that mini tournament style we had last year. Uh, your thoughts on the first half of this year? 
Well, listen, you know, it's uh, the first year was kind of a write-up, but we were really happy, and I know you guys were a big part of uh, showcasing that uh, special season we had last year. But you know, the first uh, the first part of this year has been great. Uh, we've got seen some great lacrosse. We see this team tonight, uh, Mimico, undefeated. They could be a contender. Uh, there's some other teams out there. There's a great team uh, out in the beaches. So who knows? And there's some rust still coming off some of our players. So. You may see some of these teams make a move in the second half, but it's going to be exciting. We'll have two teams uh, representing Ontario, uh, and we'll see where it goes. But, uh, yeah, we hope, we hope to put a, a great show on for the cross community, and uh, we have some surprises thing coming down for this, so uh, we're excited. Well, in my business, they call that a teaser, so uh, stay tuned as we've been promoting all year the, uh, the YouTube channel as well as the social media at the OJLL. More information about the Minto Cup. Uh, Mark Grimes, the commissioner of the Ontario Junior A Lacrosse League, uh, thanks for your time, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you, guys, and thanks for what you're doing for us, uh, showcasing our great game. Thank you. Our pleasure. We'll be back from Mimico Arena for the third period as Mimico leads 7-6 here on your Game of the Week.
Ontario Junior Lacrosse League broadcasts are brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Ontario and their hashtag Milk Up campaign. For more information, including recipes, visit new.milk.org. And our thanks to them once again for supporting Junior A Lacrosse here in Ontario. As we get you set for the third period, 7 6 for the Mountaineers and. Two very good teams, as we said, coming in. Always play each other tight. I don't think Orangeville knows how to not play a tight game. Just as a franchise, but... These two teams here tonight separated by one goal after two periods. Ariglieri going the distance. Still in, in the net in front of us, as is... Lane Hrushka, who came in when it was 4-1. So, since that point, I mean, it's a 6-2 game for Mimico after the goaltender change just past the halfway mark or just before the halfway mark of that first period. Here's Finley Thompson for Carson Moyer. Two to main will set the screen and get the flip pass off the end boards. Bounces right past Finley Thompson. And then having trouble with it was Elijah Edwards, but the shot clock will sound on the Mountaineers. Anyways, our thanks to Mark Grimes, the commissioner of the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, for joining me at intermission. And if you missed it today, the Minto Cup returning to the CAA Center in Brampton, a about 5,000 feet OHL facility, former OHL facility, former ECHL facility. Junior A and MSL have played in that building as well in Brampton and that's gonna be a good time at the end of August. Book your travel arrangements now as Bukta will flip for Peshko. Peshko lost it here. Moran Weeks fell right in front of the crease with Lee McGrath nearly on top of him. Here's Bukta. Spinning and firing Harrison. That hit the bucket of Moran Weeks. Moran Weeks will work around a screen. Cuts through a double team and then somewhere in the middle of that passed off for Peshko. Five on the shot clock. It bounces out of the stick of Peshko on his way to the net and Jaden Chipara. We'll bring it back down and jog it up and across center. Mimico representing Ontario in 2017 at the last Minto Cup in Brampton at Memorial Arena. Won by the Six Nations Arrows. Finley Thompson finds Dudamain cutting through who scores. And the celebration afterwards. This will be a great look at Lucas Dudamain. Keep your eye on him across the top of your screen. Just finds open space in front and puts it behind Origlieri. As game sheet refreshes, I was about to get really mad they gave that to Peshka, but. Here's Orangeville back the other way and Nate Ruff gets away from the fallen Mimico player who somehow is gonna draw a penalty off it. Finley Thompson and Justin Sykes on the assist as Carson Moore taken into the side boards. It will now be controlled here by Kurtz. And we'll get the penalty call. Coming to Mimico, the fifth power play of the game. will hold. Will be the infraction as the Northman will go man up. Again, as we said, for the fifth time. <coughs> 
153 penalty minutes, sixth in the OJLL for the Mountaineers who are, I mean, they're ahead of a couple teams who have played two more games than them coming into tonight and already with five power plays surrendered here in this game. But not to forget that they're tops in the league in shorthanded goals. As they lead here, 8-6. Three and a half minutes gone in this third period. Ferris. Well, that's interesting. Penalty to Bryce Cordingly and Ethan Brown is serving, so. Not sure if that was a change box infraction or if Accordingly, might be hurt. We can't see the benches from our standpoint, just the angle that you've got right there. So why wouldn't Accordingly be serving his own penalty? Trey Deer for Sanderson down in the corner as the power play sets up again around the back of Deer. Continuing to quarterback, Sanderson takes the skip shot. Hrushka standing his ground. It bounces right for Reed Kurtz. He's going to lower the shoulder. Kurtz has help. Trailing the play is Lee and Justin Lee. Stoned by Riglieri. Colm Barnett. We'll get it back to trade here in the Northmen. Slow it down again. Liam Matthews has Deer Sanderson coming off the bench late. Just got there as the shot was taken and now has to turn and head back. But down behind everybody is Finley Thompson. And a Wrigley will stone him again. Colm Barnett back the other way. Two chances shorthanded for the Mountaineers. And Origlieri stands tall on both of them. Penalty has expired as we go back to five on five. 0 for five are the Northmen tonight with the man advantage. Here's Teeple. Old Teeple shot over top of Hrushka. And the shot clock sounds. Ferris wanted a call there and officials not going to oblige. Shot clock is about three seconds ahead of where the count on the floor is. This bounces off the end board. It's not going to matter as it'll be an over and back against the Mountaineers. Six minutes gone here in the final period of regulation. Trey Deer forced Sanderson that shot. Forced Hrushka into a split save and then Deer taken down. Excuse me, that's Sanderson as Millsap will get the ball back. Millsap for Matthews. Back for Deer again. Facing a double team. Up for Sanderson this shot and in. Krushka hanging on to that. Brody Kaskinet, cross center. He'll leave for Curtis Buckta. 77, 88, now 44, Finley Thompson. All the double numbers. Double one, Moyer wants in on the action. He'll get it and pass off to Moran Weeks. Hard shot off the far glass. That may have been a pass and then turned into a shot in on a Wrigley All alone in transition, Donnie Scott finds the post. It's gonna be picked up by Moyer. Change of direction, breaks him free. Moyer wants to take it himself. Bouncing behind the Wrigley area, it's in. Transition of the Mountaineers. Going to work again. You can see all the help there as this ball is just Going to bounce over the line. 
Largest lead for either side today, matching the largest lead as Orangeville were up 4-1 as the Mountaineers lead 9-6. Moyer getting his first of the game. Rebound off the face off, picked up by Elijah Edwards. Jump ball down the floor as Edwards was trying to beat the eight count. Now Sykes. Hard pass, too much to handle for Taguri right in front of the crease. And now Graydon Stokes down floor. Stokes into the back of Aiden McDonnell gets the back in call in. Mimico wanted that a penalty. Remember, Sykes went off for a cross check on a similar play on a loose ball in the first period. Bouncing ball here, chases on McDonnell. First to get it to the outside boards. It bounces back into Mimico territory and they'll clear the zone. Eight gone here in the third. Isaiah Moran weeks off the bench. Flips for Finley Thompson. Bounces for Buxna. Moran Weeks and now Moyer. Underhand across the floor. Cross there for Reed Kurtz. Moran Weeks through the middle. Peshko couldn't bring it down and Origlieri will. Nifty pickup by Colm Barnett from Origlieri finding Trey Deer now down. Deep on the Mimico side of the floor. Liam Matthews for Millsap. That hits off the helmet of Kurtz, I believe, before going up out of play. Minute 18 away from the halfway mark of this final frame. Millsap, final scheduled frame, should probably say, as Peshko gets taken down and... Peshko getting up slowly. Orangeville headed off. For the seventh time. Already four power play goals for the Mountaineers and the trip against Aiden Long has something to say to Brett Cologne as well. Already seen one of those calls go the other way. As Alex Roussel, oh boy, look out there. As Finley Thompson back for Buckta. Buckta, Thompson, Sykes, low shot of Riglieri, crouches over top. <coughs> and look out here. As Sykes, and I believe that's Owen Ron tied up right underneath our camera position. How did that start? And how's it gonna finish? As Sykes gets the bucket off. Well, it's gonna finish with Ron being escorted off the floor. Again, we can't see the Mimico bench, so I'm not sure if Sykes is gonna be asked to leave as well. This on the bottom of your screen. Getting word from sideline reporter Kennedy Diet that yes, he is gone. As is one of the coaching staff. Rusty Kruger, I think, is having an early night. Now, don't come this way. <laughs> Kruger will head off across the floor. Already took the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. I mean, we still got a tight game here. It's 9-6 with 10.47 to go. Way too early and way too tight for this one to start getting out of control. A reminder to subscribe to this, the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League's YouTube channel, where all the games will be broadcast this season throughout the regular season playoffs, and we take you right to the Minto Cup. 
which as was announced earlier today on social media and in our intermission interview with the commissioner of the Ontario Junior Cross League, Mark Grimes, will return to Brampton's CAA Center for the first time since 2009. What an event that's gonna be. Our crew already making some plans there. As we sort out the penalty situation, a five minute penalty up on the board, presumably for Ron and nothing on the board for Rusty Kruger's ejection. But a five on three power play here for Mimico and they'll bring Finley Thompson off center into the fray and he scores. Normally you'll see someone hang back and play safety valve. Not this time though. Finley Thompson, the power play hat trick. Third goal of the game, third on the power play. And Alex Roussel becomes the ninth runner for Mimico to register a point in this game. Kaskinet. Taking that off the draw and the Mountaineers remain on the power play. Five power play goals already. As Moyer brings it down. And the 425 remaining on the clock is a major so they can get two more and the way that this game has been going can almost ice it Donnie Scott down floor chased into the corner by Ferris Aaron pass will be picked up by Mimico however and Finley Thompson will clear center ice I guess if it was center ice it would be a lot cooler in here center floor Justin Sykes is on the floor. So Thompson finding Moran Weeks off his feet, though. Dudamain couldn't pick up. Neither could Thompson. Ball remains back in Mimico territory. The shot clock inadvertently reset, though. And Jane and Chiapara. We'll start it back. Here's Matthews. For Trey Deer. 10 on the shot clock here for the Orangeville. Deer around a screen. Ferris did nicely to recover. As in Ferris collided with Matthews. Ball finds Frushka in the net. And a penalty coming here to Hudson Thompson. Origlieri asking for a water break. Ten goals allowed already. And man, how good was Origlieri last year? Gets the NLL season. Saw this a few years ago from. Doug Jamison as well, if you can believe it. The first season that Doug Jamison played in the National Lacrosse League and then came back, took about half a season to get back into summer form. Origlieri in his fifth game, a one and three record with an overtime loss thrown in there for Origlieri, who again, just lit the league on fire last year in net. Some of the goaltending that we saw was tremendous. Troy Halicek, Six Nations. Will Johnson, who is putting in work again for the beaches this season. Landon Kells in Peterborough. Calgary Roughnecks draft pick as Arigliari makes a save. And it bounces here for Donnie Scott.
A lot of teams having to rebuild though throughout this league as two graduating classes together. We talked to Pat O'Toole in Brampton, 18 of their finals appearance teams graduating, leaving them with only two players who have ever played junior lacrosse before. Finley Thompson, Moran Weeks. Moran Weeks, the man all over him, still got the shot away. And a little bit extra to Moran Weeks with a big grin on his face. Underneath of Jamie Hunt. This will be a holding call here. And I don't think there's any dispute of that call. Ninth power play of the game. Or it will be once everything settles out. Bench wanted a back in call, not going to come as Sykes will recorral this ball. Sykes for Thompson. Looking for Peshko now. Jonathan Peshko for Finley Thompson. Thompson wants to take it low. Sykes went with him and took two defenders. That opened Isaiah Moran. Weeks for the shot. Four on three power play. Sykes going to chase it all the way down the floor before they reset the shot clock. Smart move as now it turns into a five on three for the Mountaineers. Isaiah Moran Weeks for Sykes and Peshko. Cross for Moran Weeks. Those two didn't connect as it comes back for Moran. Weeks, the quick stick, and Arigliari, what a save. Full splits off to his right. And then take it down at center with Jaden Chapara, who does cross center and stops the eight count, but Finley Thompson all alone, shot wide. Well, keep it, however. We call Finley Thompson in the crease, I believe. Colm Barnett, cross center. First penalty has expired. Last, set, last one has under 10 seconds to go in it. 15 in the shot clock of the Northmen. And now we're back five on five with five and a half to play in regulation time. Matthews spins away from the corner, had Deer with him. Orangeville just gonna keep one defender back in. Liam McGrath had no intentions of joining the offense there to try and negate the transition of the Mountaineers. Alex Roussel. 10 on the shot clock as it failed to reset properly as Moyer will dish it out in front. This will be over and back or shot clock violation. Take your pick. They were both right in the same vicinity. Craig Deer. To the outside for Cole Teeple. Jeremy Searle. Bounces right way back to Mimico. Here's Moyer. Three on one for Mimico. They score. And that will probably do it the way that this game has gone here tonight. And the season for these two squads. As Moyer picks up another assist. On the Justin Lee goal, becoming the 11th Mountaineer to register a point here in this game tonight. All hands on deck for the Mountaineers. Look out here on the faceoff. Aaron Taguri goes up and over top of Jaden Shapara, who 
won it back. Watch this. Taguri right over the top, but won it straight back there to McGrath. He finds Colm Barnett for the goal. So maybe not so fast. I don't care, I'm giving Chiapara an assist. Ethan Brown winning this face off now for Mimico. That makes the score 11-7 in favor of the Northmen. That is the... What a goal from Moran Weeks. The individual effort has been in hat trick watch the entire night, basically, and starts on the far boards. Moran Weeks cuts back. That's four defenders. Switches hands, cuts back. My, oh, my. That goal, by the way, for Colm Barnett. The first since 5.38 to go in the second period. So well over 21 minutes without one tonight for Orangeville as Dudamine will take this into the end boards, traps it against the glass. Elijah Edwards wanted a quick restart. Assist given to Ethan Brown. Make it 12 Mountaineers with points. On the 12 goals that they put up to seven for Orangeville and remember Halfway through the first, it was a 4-1 lead. When Mimico made that goaltender switch, Owen Dew getting the hook in place of Lane Hrushka, who to this point with three minutes left, has only allowed three goals. Roussel holding his own close to that center line as he's got Donnie Scott and Colm Barnett right on top of him, eventually lost the ball. Rigolieri wants to know if he's coming to the bench. The Northman coaching staff say no. Coaching staff without Rusty Kruger, if he joined us late, was ejected earlier on in this period. Dive attempt, doesn't go there for Orangeville. Big collision in behind Hrushka. As Trey Deer goes nose to nose with Hrushka, Deard's gonna join the fray in behind as there's a, I'm not sure if it's an injured Orangeville player or not as meanwhile Moyer bounces a shot in front of Origlieri. Justin Lee will try again and that one never left the crease of Orangeville. Action at both ends of the floor. Cam Sanderson. For Aiden Long. Hattrick watches on for Aiden Long now as Trey Deer joins the floor. Under 10 to go on the shot clock. Krushka to his left again. It was a crease violation, anyways. And we're into the stretch time. A final reminder of our game at 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. The McDougal Cup between the Oakville Buzz and Burlington Chiefs. Again, 3 p.m. right here on this channel. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it as Kurtz takes the shot on a Wrigley area. Ethan Brown for Dudamain. And Bukta. Curtis Bukta for Kurtz. And a Wrigley area sprawling out of his crease to get it back in and kept his lower body in the paint though, so no harm, no foul. Barnett for Sanderson and Matthews. William Matthews with three points in this game with two goals, the statistical leader, but 
Mountaineers defense have kept him in check tonight. Shot off the pipe, goes up and out of play. Stopping the clock with 35 seconds left to go. Follow at the OJLL on social media as well as at JVI video. More information throughout the season on our upcoming broadcast as Hershka will make this save. Buckton jogs down the far side. Shot clock a non-factor now. And as Buckta will get it all the way back up top for Lucas Dudemain who will dribble it out as it were and the Mountaineers remain undefeated at now 9-0 on the season. Holding down top spot in the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League standings. The Northmen down in seventh, dropping a 4-5. Four, 4 and 5 with one of those, an overtime loss. Our director tonight was Kennedy Dyan. Our producer was Gary Morrison. On behalf of them, the rest of our JBI Sports Network crew and the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, I'm Matthew Carrick. We thank you for watching tonight and all season long. Hope to talk to you at 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon for the McDougal Cup between Oakville and Burlington. Good night from Mimico.